Thank you very much. Um, yeah, so as was already said, um, this is going to be a joint talk um, about two papers which are very similar in techniques and therefore it makes sense that they were soft merged. And basically the plan is uh, that I will give a very high level introduction into the topic and uh, the techniques and then uh, Rupeng will take over in the second half and um, give one of the protocols and also applications of our result. Okay, so, yeah. so our papers are concerned with uh, zero-knowledge proofs for lattice cryptography and in this area basically the main problem that uh, one wants to solve is proving a short solution to a linear equation. So this means uh, there's some public matrix A and some public right-hand side V, and uh, the prover wants to prove that he knows the short vector W such that A, A times W equals V. And yeah, maybe the simplest example of this, which maybe should also convince you that some of natural lattice problems uh, can be phrased in this way, is proving knowledge of an LWE secret. And um, therefore, I've put this example on the slide so there you see uh, that, for example, in such an LWE secret, you can write in this uh, matrix vector form. And uh, the secret vector will then just consist of uh, the LWE secret uh, and the error. And I should also say that we are basically interested in really concretely efficient protocols. So really protocols where the uh, proof size is measured in kilobytes. And for this reason, it makes sense to look at ring-based, um, or at least for this talk, to, to focus on ring-based um, yeah, uh, problems. So if now the goal is to prove such an equation really exactly, and in particular, this means that um, the solution you can extract from uh, some prover is as short as uh, the solution some, or the, the, the honest prover at least really knows, um, then until basically this, yeah, basically this year, uh, the only proof system for this were the so-called Stern type proofs, and unfortunately they are very inefficient. So, for example, for this uh, ring LWE uh, case, uh, if you prove this exactly with a Stern type, uh, Stern type proof system, then your proof size is a couple of megabytes large. And in our papers, with um, our techniques, we can basically improve on this uh, by about a factor or by about an order of magnitude. So proving such a ring LWE sample now takes a couple of hundred kilobytes. Um, yeah, before. Before I give a high-level overview of our techniques, I want to also mention other systems, but I think we have also seen this in the talk before, so maybe i try to go very quickly here. Um, so because these Stern-type proofs have been so inefficient, um, there has been a lot of, uh, uh, yeah, other, uh, basically other proof systems developed which prove uh, slightly relaxed statements and are more efficient than Stern-type proofs. And the most ex uh, important example are the so-called approximate proofs. And in these proofs, what you do there is that, or what, what they achieve is that uh, the vector they prove is, is significantly longer than the one the prover really knows. And also the equation is, is perturbed by some, by some small polynomial on the right-hand side. Um, but still, for, for some applications, uh, this is enough, and the most, most important example are signature schemes. So, for example, the dilithium signature scheme in the NIST competition, uh, this is based on such a proof, and you can really get down to, for example, in the case of dilithium, uh, to, to 2.7 kilobytes. Um, but yeah, for some applications, this is just not enough. Um, then, then there are so-called amortized proofs where you prove many equations at once, if you happen to have many equations that you want to prove, and then amortize over all of them, they are also extremely efficient. Um, and different to the approximate proofs, they don't have this annoying somehow perturbation factor on the right-hand side. Um, what they still have is that they are not exact because um, the, the, basically the vector they prove is, is much longer than the one the prover knows. And, then, last but not least, what you also can do is you can transform or transform your um, lattice equation to something which is amenable to discrete log-based proof systems, for example, bulletproof, and then prove them with the bulletproofs if you're fine with your uh, soundness uh, being based on discrete log. Okay, so much for this introduction. Now, to give a high-level um, idea how our um, exact proof system works, 
um, we maybe uh, look at uh, approximate proofs and basically one of the main steps in these proofs is that the prover sends some masked secret or some masked version of the secret. So if, if W is one of the secret polynomials inside this vector W, then what the prover sends is basically some challenge polynomial alpha times W plus some uh, masking polynomial. And yeah, in, in the case of um, approximate proofs, now what you do is you choose alpha to be um, a really small polynomial and then alpha times W is small. And then with the help of a technique which is called rejection sampling, you can also uh, only uh, take the masking polynomial to, uh, to be quite small and then the verifier can basically infer something about the, the, the secret polynomial or about the size of the secret polynomial from the size of the masked version of it. This is how these approximate proofs work. Um, what we do differently is that we actually prove that the secret polynomial inside the masking is, um, is short or more precisely that really all the coefficients of the polynomial, um, they lie in some small interval. And yeah, the simplest case is that we prove that uh, all the coefficients are binary, so they are either zero or one. Yeah, the, the standard technique to prove something to be zero or one, you prove that it's a solution to the polynomial x times uh, one minus x. And for the polynomial to now prove that really all the coefficients are zero or one, what you need to do is you need to prove that the point-wise product or the coefficient-wise product of the polynomial w times uh, the polynomial where you flip all the bits which is the all one polynomial minus w, that this point by this product is zero. And if you now look at this equation and basically replace w by our mask version of it, and now also somehow restrict our challenges uh, to not be arbitrary polynomials, but, but really only integers in ZQ, then we see that we get an equation which uh, on the left hand side is some quadratic pointwise uh, product and on the right hand side is a polynomial um, where basically the, the term we are interested in appears at the, at the leading or as the leading coefficient. Um, and this gives us a strategy to prove that this uh, basically that this secret inside the mask secret is small. Uh, namely, we basically only have to convince uh, the verifier that uh, the mask secret is of, of the correct form. So it's really uh, like R plus alpha times, uh, times the secret. Um, and that um, in this quadratic point-rise uh, product, uh, there is no quadratic term. So this leading order term vanishes. And the difficult part is to, to basically prove this in zero knowledge. And before I explain how this works, I want to do two observations, or maybe three. Um, first, uh, since we now have these uh, coefficient-wise products, um, th this is not really compatible anymore with, with polynomial products that we want to have, for, or the, at least in the approximate proofs we have for, for the challenge polynomial. Um, so, and this is why in the slide before, I basically said we have to re basically restrict to, to integer challenges, and this is bad because the reason why the, the approximate proofs are so efficient is because they can use uh, polynomial challenges. Now, if, if we cannot do this anymore, at least what we want to do is we want to ch uh, choose uh, the challenges from all of uh, ZQ, so to basically have as, as large uh, challenge space as possible. Um, but then we also need a uniform uh, masking polynomial, and this as uh, basically the, the well, f from this follows that um, the simple technique in the approximate proofs to, to, to prove that Z is of the cor correct form by just uh, giving out A times R is not enough anymore because this does, doesn't bind uh, the, this polynomial R anymore. So th this part of the approximate proofs you also have to um, change. So th yeah, the, the, we achieve all this uh, by using basically some sort of homomorphic commitment scheme. Um, and what we need is a commitment scheme where it is possible to compute basically linear expressions over our ring R inside the commitment. So basically given two commitments to two messages that uh, the verifier doesn't know, he needs to be able to compute a new commitment to some linear expression of, of the messages. And if we have this and also a, a proof to prove that there some commitment is actually a commitment to zero, then we can we have a tool to prove linear or yeah, linear expressions in inside commitments and then in zero knowledge. And to give an example how this works. Ah, uh, yeah, this is, yeah. 
Um, so I said uh, we need to prove that that is of the correct form and that this is somehow now more complicated than in the approximate proofs. And uh, what we do is uh, that the prover uh, gives out commitments uh, to, to, to the masking polynomial and to, um, to, uh, to the secret. And then he proves that this linear combination of uh, the two commitments is actually a commitment to, to, to the mask secret, to, to that. Um, this is, yeah. The, the first part, and then now to really prove that the, that the secret is zero one, um, remember that we had this uh, quadratic pointwise uh, relation, where on the, on the right hand side there was this polynomial in alpha, and we were only interested in the, in the leading term, so we, we basically commit to these low order terms that, that we call garbage terms, and then prove that al already um, uh, basically this uh, linear polynomial with coefficient of these commitments is, is a commitment to uh, this uh, quadratic product. So this basically means that there is no quadratic term, meaning that this vanishes what we wanted to prove. Um, actually, so in, now in our paper, um, there's a slightly different technique. Um, I think I now have to be very quick to, to explain this. Uh, so uh, what, what we already have in the proof is that, that the prover gives out some, some commitment to the to the, to the secret because uh, we needed this for this uh, to, to prove that the, the mass secret is of the correct form. Um, and this means that in this quadratic relation where uh, we had basically twice the mass secret, we can use uh, the, the actual secret once and then only the, the, or the, the mass secret only once. And um, to, to do this directly, what we no would need is basically a commitment scheme where we could do uh, point-wise products but our commitment scheme doesn't support this, and what we use as basically as a method to, to still um, do this is uh, we, we basically use the fact that um, the entity of, of a polynomial product translates to um, a point-wise product in the entity domain. And then with this trick, we can basically prove that if the entity of some quadratic polynomial product um, that they are in the leading term uh, an expression evolves which, which shows that the entity of, of our secret polynomial is zero one. Um, yeah, and with this, I hand over to, um, yeah, Rupeng. <coughs> okay, uh, thanks, Greg. Uh, hi, I'm Rupeng, and we'll finish the remaining part of this talk. Um, Greg has just shown how to construct a zero knowledge argument. Okay. Uh, Greg has just shown how to construct a zero knowledge argument for uh, linear equations with a binary solution. Uh, a very rough idea. And next, I will talk about how this idea can be extended to prove a much wider lattice based relations. Okay. Both uh, their work and our work aims to ch achieve. Uh, so standard soundness and high efficiency simultaneously. Okay, let's start with our main protocol. Uh, okay. uh, the main relation considering in this work is linear equations with uh, quadratic uh, with quadratic constraints over its witness. Uh, in, in particular, the prover needs to prove that he knows a secret vector w uh, marked as red here. Uh, <coughs> satisfy a linear equation a w equals v and a quadratic formula f w equals zero. And uh, here, for simplicity, we consider a simplified instance where w is our length three, and that the quadratic formula is w one equals w two times w three. Okay. Uh, so uh, to prove this. Our starting point is a standard snow protocol in the lattice based setting. Uh, this is perfect to prove the linear equation part, but tells nothing about the quadratic constraints. Uh, so, to prove the second part, oops. Okay. So, to prove the second part, we, we rely on the observation that uh, after receiving the response day, the Alpha is able to compute uh, z2 times z3 and z1 times alpha. And the difference between these two products is uh, linear in alpha if and only if w1 equals w2 times w3. So is, we can reduce the problem of argue quadratic constraints into the problem of argue 
that the two, the two the three minus the one alpha, which is denoted D here, is indeed linear in alpha. So to prove this, uh, we can commit the coefficients and send, send the commitment C and CB to the alpha, and then the alpha checks if alpha C plus CB is a commitment of D. Mm, this seems to work if the commitment scheme is homomorphic, but it requires that the remnants used to commit D is, 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 is equal to alpha SA plus SB. So next, we will require the prover to send the correct randomness to the verifier, and then the verifier ch ch will check the equality of the commitments using this correct randomness. The equality will hold if the commitment scheme is homomorphic with respect to addition and multiplication by a constant. Uh, so uh, the soundness is guaranteed, but partially, partially reviewing the but but partially revealing the randomness of complement may affect its hiding property and thus will compromise the zero knowledge property of the whole protocol. To analyze to analyze why this to analyze why this does not occur, we can, we consider a concrete commitment scheme developed recently by Baum et al. Uh, in this commitment scheme, the randomness S is sampled from a Gauss division and uh, it can be proved that if we reject sampling on the, randomness, uh, the correct randomness S, then the whole protocol is still zero knowledge. Uh, one problem of this common scheme and all knowing, uh, all knowing latest common scheme is that uh, it is only homomorphic with respect to multiplication by a small constant. So here, instead of sampling alpha from ZQ, we will sample it from ZP, where P is a small number. Okay. This is the main part of our, of, of our main protocol. Our, <coughs> the full protocol also includes some auxiliary commitments and some auxiliary proofs, but they are omitted from this talk. Okay. Mm, note that our protocol can perfectly prove the linear equation part where standard snow protocol and can perfectly prove the quality constraints where argue linear equations over the commitments, so it, so it achieves a standard soundness. Also, if P is not too small, then this basic protocol will only repeat a few times rather than 200 times to achieve a negligible soundness, soundness error. So uh, it can achieve a high efficiency. Mm -hmm. OK. Uh, this is the. Okay, okay. Okay. Okay, okay. Let me see the things over there. Okay. Okay. Uh, we just, uh, we just uh, talked about our main protocol, and next uh, we will see how our main protocol can be used to prove, uh, uh, prove three different and commonly used uh, lattice relations. First, we will see how to prove linear equations with short solutions. Here, for simplicity, we assume that the bound beta plus one is a power of two, and to prove this, um, we realize, uh, first observe, observe that uh, an integer a is bounded if and only if it can be decomposed into a binary vector of bounded length. Mm. So in the first step, uh, we will decompose the vector w into a binary vector w prime and prove that this binary vector satisfy a new linear relation. Um, to prove that w prime is a uh, binary vector, we rely on the following observation that an integer a is binary if and only if it satisfies that a square equals a. Uh, so in the next step, we will prove that wi prime is binary. We are arguing that wi prime equals wi prime times w prime. So in this way, we can transform the whole relation uh, into a linear equation 
and a correct constraint over its witness. Mm, okay, so this is exactly what can be proved by our main protocol. Okay, next. What? 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 Oh. There is also some troubles. <sighs> okay. <laughs> okay, okay. I stopped the timer when you were uh, yeah, uh, fixing this. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> okay, uh, next I uh, will talk about how to prove subset sum or Emelian equations. Here, the bit, uh, here each BI is a bit and is used to select each AI WI. And the task is to prove that the sum of the selected ARWI equals V. Uh, for simplicity, here we consider a simplified example that uh, M equals 2 and each WI is of length 1. Mm, to prove this, okay. Okay. To prove this uh, let WI prime equal BRWI, then we can transform the first equation into a Standard, uh, a standard linear equation and the correctness of each WI prime and the fact that each BI is binary can be argued where correct constraint. So again, we know how to prove this from our main protocol. Okay, next uh, we will see how to uh, prove linear equations with hidden matrix. Here, the protocol should protect both the matrix A and the vector W. And uh, for simplicity, here we, can, we assume that A is a 2 by 2 matrix. And to prove this, let URJ equals ARJ uh, times WJ. And it can be very easy to see that V1 equals U1 plus U12, and V2 equals U. One plus u to two, so we can transform this linear equation with hidden matrix into a linear equation with a public matrix. Also, correctness of each U R J can be argued with correct constraints. So again, we know how to prove this. To summarize, uh, from our main protocol, we can construct zero knowledge arguments for three di different and uh, basic lattice relations. And uh, next, we will see how this zero knowledge argument can be used to construct real world applications. Here we will not go step into the detailed construction and only give a graph root map and some results. Okay. First, as just, uh, as just mentioned, from our main protocol we can construct zero knowledge argument for some basic lattice relations and and then from these zero knowledge arguments, we can construct zero knowledge argument for some cryptographic primitives. Uh, for example, pre knowledge of plain text for a PKE scheme. And for some of these cryptographic schemes, for example, accumulator or PRF, uh, we currently we only know how to construct zero knowledge arguments for them from a certain type of protocol. And our work solves this problem. Mm, next, from, uh, from suitable lattice-based cryptographic schemes and, and there are not arguments for them, we can construct preserving pre primitives that are used in real-world applications, including real signature, growth signature, electronic cache, and rent proof. Mm, if, we set, if we set the concrete parameters of our schemes uh, suitably, we find that uh, uh, schemes from our solution are much more efficient than those from a certain type of protocol, but it's less efficient than schemes from a fit shami result protocal. Um, but we, we stress that we don't use uh, optimization such as structural lattice and uh, uh, some application specific, specific optimizations. And uh, we believe that uh, the efficiency could greatly improve if we use these optimizations. Okay, that's all. Thank you for attention. And okay, okay. And I will. Uh, uh, by the way, I will get my PhD degree this December, and uh, will be on the job market then. Uh, 
If you are interested, please contact me. Thank you. Do we have time for questions? Yeah, yeah sure. Um, could you go back to your main protocol? Sorry? Could you go main back to your main protocol? protocol? Yeah. Mm. Okay. Or is it offline? Um, and back. Oh, okay. Okay. So this, I think this is this so-called binary proof, and this has been known for a few years in the discrete logarithm setting, and it was extended to the lattice setting last year. What's the difference of this protocol versus the previous ones? Uh, from the previous, uh, yeah. from the not protocol. Yeah. yeah, so what's your new technique in this protocol okay. versus the previous one? Okay, uh, the, main, uh, 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 the main difficulty is to prove that a uh, vector is small. In previous strong protocols, they use small, they uh, set all things small. For example, a small r, a small alpha, and then check if z is small, right? Mm -hmm. But I think uh, the previous uh, protocols can still prove that the this thing, this secret that you have is binary, so you are proving that it's short uh, so in the previous protocols as well. Uh, yeah, uh, by Gregor? No, it's not by Gregor. No, no. Uh, in previous protocols, uh, they don't. Okay. Uh, they don't use the. They don't argue linear relations over the complement. So, the, uh, ac actually, we don't know how to prove that. Uh, uh, the witness is binary. Oh. No, uh, we, we haven't seen that. Maybe uh, if you say, okay, if we can use the one-out-time proof in the relativity setting, this is possible, but we don't know how to make it in details. Yeah. Okay. Thank, uh, thank you. you.